Comparison is the thief of joy. Wise words by Theodore Roosevelt and seemingly a little bit out of place at the start of a TV comparison video. However, they do ring true with these three TVs. Opt for any one of these best selling TVs and I believe you'll be happy with what you get. But come on, you knew it was coming. Once you put these TVs side by side, there are some interesting differences that if you're torn, I think you're gonna wanna see. Hey guys, Louis from Smart Home Sounds here, and today we're digging into the LG C3, the Sony A80 Al, and Samsung S95C. Three top contenders in the OLED TV category, and while these aren't the most premium TVs from each brand, they still sit in that more premium category. Now these head-to-head -head comparisons are brilliant for drawing out any key differences and hopefully helping you guys make a more informed purchase decision, but hey, these videos do take some time, so if you enjoy what we do and you want to support us, and please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now I do have a little bit of a spoiler for you guys. There is no clear winner here and this is definitely not a one size fits all scenario. These TVs all have their own pros and their cons, which I'll do my best to highlight throughout this video for you to decide which ones matter the most for you. Now I'll do the same and we'll share which one that I would personally go for at the end of this video. And I'd love it if you guys could do the same down in the comments below. Now to address the elephant in the room, it might seem a little bit late to be releasing this video now, given that we've just had CES and a TV for the new models to come this year. So should you still even be considering these? Well, the short answer is yes. We're still a few months off seeing most 2024 models hit the market, but once they do arrive, these models are likely to drop in price, making them even better value for money. Now, of course, if you're a real tech junkie who wants the very latest tech available, then you might want to hold off. But I imagine a lot of our comparisons and findings will carry through to the new generations of these models as well. Plus, all three of these TVs have already dropped in price considerably from their launch price, so now is a really great time to pick up a new TV at a reduced price anyway. Now, before I get into differences in picture quality, there are a lot of other factors that are included when choosing a new TV, and we're gonna start with the price. Now, prices are subject to change, and change they do, regularly. But as of right now, here's how they stack up. Now you might be thinking, why the S95C and not the S90C? Well, since the S95C has dropped to such a competitive price, we felt this offered better value in this review, but I will touch on the S90C a little bit later on in the video. Another important factor, the sizing. Not all of these TVs come in the same sizes. So the C3 gives us the most options. We've got six sizes, ranging from 42 inch up to 83 inch, while the A80 Al and S95C are more restricted to just 55 inch, 65 inch, and 77 inch. But it is worth noting that there is an 83 inch variant of the A80 Al, the A84 Al, which is, for all intents and purposes, the same TV. Now, if you're unsure on the screen size that you need for your space, we already have a really handy video just up here, which should help you out. All three of these models run off different operating systems. Now, while many of us are used to getting a new TV and instantly plugging in our streaming box, never to interact with the TV's own interface again, that's not the case for everyone. And you do still use elements of the TV's OS when making changes to settings, adjusting picture quality, and all sorts of things like that. Samsung used Tizen, well, a Tizen-based smart TV interface, which boasts a lot of good apps, but it really isn't the easiest to navigate. They have tidied up some bits, but out of the three, this is the least favorite for me, and it's also just a little bit clunky. Now, they have also made a little bit of a name for themselves for not having the best firmware, making people like myself a little bit nervous about potential issues. Now, if you guys remember, we did have that whole thing with one of their updates, changing the picture quality of the S95B, which doesn't really fill me with confidence, but they have generally been pretty good this time around. LG introduced WebOS 23 last year, which I actually quite like. Now you can have your own profiles and it's laid out well, but the only downside is that there are quite a few ads and it can feel a little bit messy at times. Finally, Sony used Google TV, which is intuitive, quick and easy to navigate, and there aren't too many ads. So truthfully, my personal favorite would be Google TV. When it comes to design, all of these options are good looking TVs, nice and slim and with pretty thin bezels. The Samsung S95C comes with a separate one connect box where you can plug all your cables in like a pass through box and that allows the TV to be far slimmer. So if you were looking to wall mount your TV, for example, then this would be a good option, but you'll need to factor in the wiring to get the cable from the one connect box to the TV. Now the other two TVs, as you can see, are still very slim, but because the connections are housed on the back, 
there's still a notable difference. Remotes, again, might not be that big of a deal if you're using something like an Apple TV device, but all three have gone for pretty different approaches. Now, I'm not gonna do a deep dive on the sound performance of these TVs, as I feel that most people will opt for a separate audio solution, such as a soundbar. However, for those who don't have the budget right now, here are the differences. So on the A80L, we have a 60 watt 2.2 channel speaker system. The S95C offers a 70 watt 4.2.2 channel setup. And finally, the LG C3 also has a 2.2 channel sound system, but it can up mix to 9.1.2. Now, as with anything, spec can only tell you so much. And actually, it's the A80L that offered the best sound performance in our testing, which I feel is down to their acoustic surface audio plus technology. Now this uses actuators behind the screen to help replicate what you're watching with sound coming from the exact area of the screen. Let's start talking picture quality then and starting with the A80L, this is a WRGB OLED model. Now for those unsure, these models use a white subpixel with red, green, and blue pixels to produce colors. Now the A80L misses out on the heatsink and MLA technology in the model above, the A95L, but it benefits from Sony's impressive Cognitive XR processor. The LG C3 is also a WRGB OLED, one of the brand's OLED Evo TVs, which is powered by their upgraded for 2023 Alpha 9 Gen 6 processor. Both of these TVs use the same panel from LG Display, but where the differences in image come from is in the processing. The Samsung S95C is the odd one out here, jumping on the latest type in the OLED market with a Quantum Dot OLED or QD OLED panel. Now this starts with the blue light rather than white and then adds layers of Quantum Dots on top to give us the reds, greens, and everything in between. Now by removing the pure white component of traditional WOLEDs or WRGB OLEDs, we should have better color purity and brightness. So we're looking to see richer, more vivid colors, especially in the brighter areas of the image. Now the S95C is powered by Samsung's neural quantum 4K processor. And it's worth noting at this point that the S95C doesn't offer Dolby Vision, which the other two TVs do. Now this might not be a big problem for you and it probably won't affect the majority of your content, but it is definitely something worth noting. Okay, let's have a closer look then. Now I try to avoid demo content, which you'll see in a lot of other comparisons and use real world footage instead, as that's more realistic to what you'd be seeing at home. So first thing to address is the obvious. The Samsung is a QD OLED and offers far more vivid colors and an overall much brighter picture. Now with most content, your eye is definitely drawn to the S95C first, as it just feels like it pops off that much better. Along with brighter highlights, contrast is also handled well. Again, helping the images really pop off the screen. Now you can see here on the Apple TV homepage, the white text is far brighter on the Samsung. Now I know some of you like to see the specs, so for those interested, the 65 inch versions of these TVs on a 10% window in their respective accurate modes, we're looking at almost 1,400 nits on the S95C, 820 nits on the LG C3, and 600 nits on the Sony. So straight off the bat, if you're after the brightest TV in this lineup, then the Samsung is the way to go. After that, the C3 does offer a brighter image than the A80L in both SDR and HDR content. But that being said, we have tested all three TVs, both in our darker studio and brighter showroom, and I do feel that the A80L is bright enough for moderately lit spaces, and it's certainly more than capable in dark rooms. And actually, might be a more watchable performance. But of course, you can bring down the brightness on all three TVs if needed. Again, if you're looking for the TV with the punchiest colors, it's the S95C. Taking a look at any nature programs or animated movies, the colors really help the images pop off the screen, far more so than they do on the A80L. And for me, the C3 sits somewhere in the middle of the two. Now, Sony are well renowned for their image processing and delivering a very accurate picture. And for me, you could argue that the S95C is almost reminiscent of a vivid mode here. And I'd say that the colors do feel more true to life on the Sony, while again, the LG is sitting somewhere in the middle. Now, of course, different people will have different preferences. So make sure you guys get down in the comments and let me know which one you prefer. And let me know whether you prefer the image on the A80L, the S95C or the LG C3. So now I've flicked over to some sports content. And again, the colors on not only the Samsung, but also the LG do offer an image that pops off the screen a little bit more. And this might be more of a preferable viewing experience for some of you. Now, whilst we're on the topic of sports, motion processing is also gonna be another really important factor that you guys are gonna to wanna to take into consideration. Now, to be honest with you, all three of these TVs do a fantastic job when it comes to handling that motion, but the A80L in particular is a standout for me, and it really offers another level of immersion. 
Now these TVs are currently in their standard mode. So what we're gonna do now is flip them over into their respective filmmaker modes to show you guys some examples of what the brands think is closest to how the filmmakers intended. LG and Samsung seem a lot more similar here. The Samsung is now considerably darker, but the skin tones do feel more accurate. The Sony is now warmer and we've lost some of the cooler blue tones. Example number two comes from the film Oppenheimer, and this is a slightly darker scene. So I wanna take this opportunity to talk to you guys about the details in the darker areas of the image. Now it might be a little bit nitpicky, but what I'm noticing right here in the studio is that there's not as much information retained in the darker areas of the image on the C3 as there is on the Samsung or the Sony. So if we take a closer look at the hairline and also the details in the shadows on the side of the face, I think there's a little bit more information on the A80L and the S95C in comparison to the C3. Again, with the skin tones here, we're getting quite different images. On the S95C, there's more of a red hue, and he's almost got a little bit of a green hue on the C3, and the A80L does seem a bit darker here, though more accurate on the skin tones. Of course, if you didn't have all of these right next to each other, then these are the details that you might not necessarily pick up on in day-to-day -day viewing. Now, one thing I also want to point out is the difference in performance when these TVs are in our darker film studio, which has no natural light, and then over in our showroom, which is a bright space with plenty of natural light. In particular, the skin tones is something to really look at here. In testing, we found that the S95C gave more unnatural skin tones in our brighter showroom with Tom Cruise looking quite pink in this clip here. However, when we took them over to our studio, while still more vivid and saturated, it doesn't seem quite so pronounced. Now you can of course calibrate these TVs either professionally if you're really serious about it or you can do it yourself by deep diving through all of the different settings and menus and coming up with a picture profile that you're happy with. Now I must say that right out of the box the A80L for me is offering the most accurate picture and for somebody who's into photography and videography the most accurate picture is always most likely to win. In terms of viewing angles, in our testing, the Samsung S95C does win out here thanks to that QD OLED panel. However, I have found that the A80L actually handles reflections a little bit better than the other two. All three of these TVs offer a variety of gaming features, which make them a great option for an all-rounder, multi-purpose TV. They all offer support for VRR and ALLM. For us, the C3 is one of the best gaming TVs and has been our go-to gaming recommendation, and for good reason. With four HDMI 2.1 ports, you can have three HDMI 2.1 sources connected, so a PS5, Xbox Series X, and a PC, and still have another one for your eARC connection to a soundbar. I would say that in LG game mode, the picture is a little bit flat for my liking. I personally love a vivid experience for gaming, but it's still a great option. Now with the boost mode setting on in the gaming optimizer menu, you'll get an input lag of around about 5.5 milliseconds in 4K at 120 hertz. The S95C is also pushing close to the C3 and it does offer a more vibrant, exciting visual experience with its vivid colors and that's that QD technology really coming into play. It also retains its HDR brightness better in game mode than the others. The S95C also offers four HDMI 2.1 ports and a 144 hertz refresh rate for PC gaming, which neither of the other two TVs offer. Now input lag, we're looking around about 5.1 milliseconds. Now there's no Dolby Vision gaming on the Samsung though, which is worth pointing out. Finally, the A80L is definitely not a bad gaming TV and for casual gamers will be more than good enough. It does offer a higher input lag of 8.8 milliseconds and one of the main potential drawbacks is that we've only got two HDMI 2.1 ports on this TV. There's also no HDIG support. Now, one thing that is good on the Sony for gaming though is its smooth gradation feature in game mode, which helps to clean up any heavy gradients. Now, we wouldn't recommend going too intense or you'll start to lose some of the details. Samsung doesn't have a setting like this, but it does do a decent job of doing this natively, while LG settings doesn't seem to have as much impact as Sony's. Of course, if you're a PS5 gamer, it will automatically give you the best HDR settings when connected, so you don't need to faff around with the settings. Now, I mentioned the S90C at the start, which truthfully, could have had a place in this review. Now sitting just below the S95C, the S90C comes in with a price tag of around about the 1600 pound mark for the 65 inch. So pretty similar to the LG C3. 
Now it actually has the same second gen QD OLED panel tech as the S95C, but the latter can go much brighter, I presume down to the processing. Though it would still be a brighter option than the C3 and A80L. The S90C still gives the vibrant colors with that QD OLED tech, but I feel that they are slightly less natural looking than its more expensive counterpart. For me, if you like the picture of the Samsung S95C with the vibrant colors and brighter picture, but you're happy to swap things like the One Connect box and are happy to step down a little bit on the brightness in favor of a more affordable model, then the S90C could be the sweet spot for you and definitely one to consider. As you hopefully can see from this review, there is no best TV, but there will be a best for you. Now, I think the most helpful way that I can sum this up is by giving you a few scenarios of when I would recommend each TV. Scenario number one, our first buyer is Elliot. He's looking for a TV suitable for his light, airy lounge. He watches a lot of sports and anime and wants a TV that is visually striking and importantly, nice and bright. Now he'll be using an Apple TV Plus for all of his streaming, he's a big PC gamer and will probably add a soundbar further down the road as budget allows. His winner is the Samsung S95C or maybe even the S90C budget dependent. Scenario number two, our second buyer is Emily. She's looking for a solid all-rounder TV and is keen to get the best bang for her buck. She watches a bit of everything from movies to sports and has a few different consoles in her household. Now, brightness isn't the be all and end all, but her room is fairly bright and she likes a vibrant image. Her winner is the LG C3. Scenario number three. Finally, our third buyer is me. Now, I have a personal bias towards the most accurate image and prioritize the most authentic viewing experience over a more vivid image. Now, I'm happy spending a little bit more for what I perceive to be the most true to life performance and my living room isn't overly bright, so my priority isn't the brightest TV that I can get for my budget. Now, I'm a casual gamer on my PS5 and would be connecting my Sonos Beam Gen 2 up for audio, so my winner is the Sony A80L. Now look, all three are very good TVs and a lot of the differences in the visuals will be more pronounced in this kind of setting than if you just had one of these TVs in your home. The decision is most likely to be made in the details. So do you have a bright space? Do you favor color vibrancy or accuracy? Do you need four HDMI ports? Will you be using a soundbar or the TV's own speakers? How seriously do you take your game in? These are the day-to-day -day things that will have an impact on your viewing experience and it should help you to start to work out which TV is ticking more boxes for you or which could be completely written off. So, which is your winner? Let me know in the comments below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you all in the next one.